My name is Dalton Grant, a former high jumper, three-time Olympian, European champion, Commonwealth Games champion, board director of London 2012 Big Team, bringing the Olympics to London. Welcome to the Dalton Grant Academy show. In this series, we'll be having special guests talking about a wide range of topics, having the right mindset, overcoming various obstacles in your life. Today's show is sponsored by Argon Utility Solution, your independent gas main service and meter installation specialist. Our special guest is the legend, World Cup winner, Brazilian international, Arsenal footballer, Gilberto. Hi Dato. how are you my friend? How are you my friend? Oh good, oh good. But I'd like to go straight into the show. Um, no further ado, just give an insight briefly about yourself and you know, inside to your achievements. When I look to the past, it's a great satisfaction for me, especially uh, considering the place I, I grew up, you know, with my family, a very small village, and um, achieve all the great standards in football at the international level, uh, with Brazil, with the Arsenal, the clubs I played. It's beautiful for me when I look on a big picture of uh, every step I have made, the way think, you know, perform in every, in every sense, professional way, in a particular way, you know, with the friends I've made, the people I've met throughout my career. Yeah, great. Well, let's go back to your youth. So did you have any role models that inspired you? Like what players, was it in football? Was it outside football? Was it your family? Just give us an insight who inspired you. Honestly, I have a, a big inspiration inside my house. My, my father used to play amateur football. Since when I was very little, he always brought me to, um, to the games to watch him. We have to travel around uh, close to much my town. He and I always enjoyed him. I grew up playing football on the streets in school with my uh, cousins and friends. Okay. This was great. But then watching uh, players like uh, Toninho Cerezo, Zico, when I was a kid, was amazing to see the way they play. But uh, of course, I never imagined I could become one of them. Uh, from the place I, I lived, uh, where I grew up, I could not expect that. You know, it was too far away for me, honestly. When I... I got my first opportunity to, to be part of a, a proper football academy. Then you start to, to have a different dreams. You start to realize that you have a, a great possibility. Yeah, that's great. So any up and coming footballers, give them an insight. What do you think, like, especially in a modern day football, obviously when you was playing um, soccer, it's a top, totally different environment, the challenges that you have. What can you give to the youth today, someone who's up and coming and inspiring to be a football player? One thing they must have in mind that uh, play football in a, in a high level or if you want to be professional, it's not easy. It's not easy as many people think it is. You have to compete every day with your teammates. You know, you, you compete to yourself to become better every day and uh, to be, you know, a better player. You, but you have to work very hard. You have to train properly. You have to train extra. You have to have extra hours to to improve your skills, your technical ability, your physical condition. Is um, despite the fact is a collective uh, sport for you to achieve some things about yourself. Is you are alone. You have people to help you but it's about how much you want, how much you want to get somewhere higher in your career. What do you really want to achieve? You must think about it. Because um, when you see just the top of uh, the pyramid, uh, when you see the bigger players and people outside where oh, I want to be like Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, they, for many of them, believe that it's, it's a, a simple task, it's not that. There is a lot of sacrifice to be made. You will not have time to go on the weekends with your friends for a party. You know, you miss a lot of uh, important days from your family, you know, birthdays, uh, parents' celebration, and uh, this kind of thing. <laughs> uh, 
And then you have to, to get used to that. But it's a sacrifice you have to make if you want to, to become a football player, a professional football player. And when you are there and getting all the, you know, the, the opportunity and be on the field you know, with, uh, in a big stadium, and then you realize the effort you make, uh, you know, it worth, you know, pay for the many, many days you have to work very hard to be there. Well, definitely. So did you have any rituals? How did you prepare for games? So what's the secrets, how you got up for a big game, like if you was playing against Man United or Chelsea back then, how did you prepare? For me, every game was important, very important. You know, it doesn't matter if I would play Chelsea, if I would play Manchester United, if I would play any other team, middle table, lower table, somebody like that, you know. For me, I have to respect, you know, every opponent. But uh, my preparation uh, began in the, my training session, the way I trained myself, the way I, I came up um, and uh, put my my kit on and go to the field in every day training session. This was actually my preparation for every game because I knew if I would be uh, well prepared, you know, if I train hard, you know, to be physical, physically uh, strong, to be technically good and understand exactly the plan of the game, the strategies, I, I knew exactly what I had to do in order to stop my opponents, you know, the play I would face on the field, especially the midfielders and the players next to me or attacking players. But um, for me, it's all about every everyday preparation. You know, every every time when you go to to the training session, is uh, you uh, against your against you against your mind. Sometimes you not feel well. But you have to train, and then you have to give everything you can. I think this is how I always prepare. You know, it doesn't matter if I was not feeling well, if I was hundred percent, but I gave it all in every training session because I knew in the game I have to be like that. I would not have a, a chance, you know, to to sleep a tiny seconds because this moment when you you lose your focus in the game is when the you are in the top uh, top level of football, top level of the game. The opponents take advantage of you. Definitely. So that's great. But like with modern day football now, you've got to be an athlete to play. And now, obviously, in your time, um, it was more technical, they said, and you wasn't as fit as the players now, but you had more control. And, you know, what would you say? Um, uh, give us an insight to your training, what you've done then, what made you different from the rest? Did you do your own special little secret training sessions or did you just rely on the team, whatever team you played for? Well, um, my, my story in football, you know, came a little bit late because um, I had to do some other things, some other jobs before to football. I came to my first uh, football club, uh, professional club, you know, in their academy when I was 16. And after five months only, I had to go back to my hometown to work in a factory, in a switch factory, basically, um, for two and a half years to, to help my family. And therefore, I was training, I was playing amateur football, not proper training session. And when I came back for, for this, the same club, I was 19 years old. I didn't have much time. I didn't have much, their preparation. You know, the players there, they were uh, better prepared than me. But every day for me was a very special day. After every training session, I always stay, you know, for an hour, more or less. Uh, training even more. Sometimes I do some running, some physical training, sometimes. Uh, do some uh, long balls, passing, uh, or some other drills uh, to to improve. Because uh, in my mind, in these two and a half years, I stay in my hometown working to have family. It's like I miss a lot of um, uh, uh, things, a lot of foundations uh, to be better prepared. 
And then I did not have time, you know, just to work, to think that um, work with the team, with um, the, the, the only training, you know, from the staff was enough for me. Uh, I, I always push myself. I had to push myself. I had no choice. I had no doubt about it that I had to push in order to every day try to compensate the time I miss training. Okay. Brilliant. So give me an insight. What happened? How did you handle defeat? Or if you was having a, a bad patch in the game, how did you turn that around? It's always hard um, when you are losing the game uh, because you do you know, good preparation uh, to face every opponent. But um, sometimes, you know, you are doing well, very well. You do everything right. Uh, but um, somehow you, you face a tough opponent and then they score first. And you have to, uh, to keep your focus, focus in the right way. It's not easy sometimes because it's a collective game. It's not, it doesn't depend only about yourself. It's important everyone don't lose their focus. You know, and um, in in football especially, um, there are some guys. They are leaders. It's like uh, the, the the coach on the field. It's important this guy take this guy take the responsibility to help the others. But sometimes you feel one of your teammates are not feeling well, don't feel confident. It's time to lift them up to give them, you know, their confidence they need um, to face in case uh, somebody make a mistake or something like that. And uh, for me, uh, once again, it's all about, about the preparation. You know, of course, when you prepare, in my mind, it, I, I can face every difficult on the field. Maybe you are losing the game. You have to understand if the opponent is better than you or not. If they are doing well, you have to change the strategy and to overcome the problems you may face. Sometimes it doesn't have much time because then they score another goal and uh, then you look, the, the team is lost. But uh, it's important uh, the leaders of the team identify when some things is going wrong on the field and try to close the gap. Sometimes you have the manager who from outside that uh, calls somebody else and change things. That's not always like uh, work like this. And you have to uh, to overcome the problem by yourself in many, many occasions. Yeah. Okay. What would you say is your fondest memories of playing for Arsenal and playing for Brazil? I remember the first day I arrived in the national team, I remember my first day I arrived at Arsenal. It's something um, un unforgettable for me. It's amazing because, um, you know, it's like um, for me going back to the past of my life when I was a kid, play on the street, getting them is more than a dream for me because when I was a kid, I never dreamed like to be there. I, of course, play football on the street, you know. Some friends, uh, they, they, they might say at that time, Oh, you may, we may go to play somewhere else, to Atlético Mineiro <laughs> in Brazil or to America Mineiro, to Cruzeiro, Sao Paulo, whatever. But, um, you know, my village was very little, far away from everything. Uh, you know, I said, this is not, it's not going to happen. Never in my life. Just when I have an opportunity. And then uh, being there in, in this uh, in the national team, and then um, at Arsenal is uh, more than a, a dream for me. Is uh, is a life change. Life, my life changed completely when I I left my, the factory here after the situation with my parents uh, became stable, and I went to to my first club and they accepted me back. And then it was a life change for me. Because um, I knew it was my last chance. Uh, if I if I fail, it could have happened at that time. I would I, maybe I would not have another chance. I grabbed my chance with uh, 
all my strengths and I I said to myself now is about your it's about me now I have the chance nobody take it from me yeah well you know I met you quite a few years ago in Rio with Louis Bomonte um, you know and that was a great experience going to Rio so going back to Rio or Brazil let's say what about the Latin spirit the Latin blood the Brazilian carnival come and <laughs> How did you handle that? Because the energy, you know, with the capoeiro and the salsa, how did you focus and keep focus of football with the energy and the passion from your country? It's quite hard for some, some of the guys. You know, it's not so easy because it's part of our culture. And everyone likes to, to enjoy carnival. But uh, many, many occasions, we didn't have time, honestly. We were playing the competitions. Uh, of course, you know, some of the players really, really want to, <laughs> to enjoy the party. But uh, for me, uh, I, I didn't care, honestly. I, I had my opportunity when I was a teenager playing uh, dance in Carnival, my hometown, which was, you know, I was happy by that. But of course, Rio de Janeiro, Bahia, some other place, Carnival there is very famous, you know, it's, uh, it's a big party. But for me, um, as long as I was um, doing my work, I was playing, we have a game to play, because it not, was not very, uh, very often that they allowed us to have a free day, a free time, in the carnival time. Then we had to, to be focused in the, you know, it was hard, but we had to be focused in the game, we had to, if you have a, a game ahead of us. Sometimes it was quite tough because not everyone are in the same mood. Some of, of the players want to, to enjoy the party, but uh, you have to do your, your best. For me, I didn't care. You know, if you had to play, if you had to train, and every day um, I was ready to do that. Yeah, I could see the insight because you started football late, late and you thought you had to catch up, so you kept focus. Great. Yeah. Um, so how would you say um, generally now that, Football has kind of mold your life. I believe that um, through football or any other sport, and my, my case in football, it's about the discipline you need to have. You need uh, to, uh, in order to perform, in order to to do everything necessary to to achieve what you want. Because if you don't have discipline, you know, um, it's very hard to get somewhere. You might be a, a good player, but if you are not, not if you don't have discipline, then you are, you become a problem, you know, for the manager, for the others, because you don't want to to follow the rules or whatever, or do the the right strategy. You want to just to do what you want. It's not like that. Football uh, helped me a lot with that, and to focus, to concentrate, um, to be. You know, uh, competitive. This you bring. Uh, I I brought it to my life as well. You know, because I got my discipline in my house. Sometimes it's quite annoying for the others <laughs> because I want to have things right. You know, uh, the logistics about things, organization. You learn this with football because if you are not organized to do some things, you know, uh, on in the dressing room, you start to create a problem. And um, these kind of uh, things I've learned football to be disciplined, organization, uh, to be focused, and to be competitive. Because in life is like this: if you if you have a business, as I have now, for example, I have to have a right organization, a good organization. I have to have discipline um, to follow the strategy for my business. I I need to work very well with the people you know to manage people and in order to for the business to be successful is many of these things i've learned from football from the coach i've had for, with the people i've worked with i've learned from everyone this was the beautiful thing in right. football you know because you meet people from different backgrounds but it's about you to absorb uh, the knowledge from them and every day uh, you go there to to face to meet these people to train with them to to listen from them yeah well said i mean i feel the same as being a former world class athlete um all you can be 
is the best you can be. How do you see yourself um, now as a coach, a manager? Where do you see yourself fitted better? How would you, you know, what role would you play if you had your chance now? At the moment, what I have done, you know, I became, um, you know, a manager of uh, players. Um, work with them, you know, assessing their career. Um, this, honestly, I, I'm, I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying doing this. Um, I don't know if I'll do it uh, for the rest of my life, but uh, as long as I'm doing this, I have done for myself in order to perform better in this in this job is learn, learn different kind of skills. Uh, in order to bring them a better information, to find a better way to work with them, to help them to get to their career and to to help them lead with their frustration. Because player, every player wants to play, but you are not going to play in every game. <laughs> Sometimes when you play, you don't perform well. And um, and I call, I speak to them. My 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 job at this time. It's just work close to them, to, to help them um, talk and listen to them. Listen to them, but also provoke them to first, you know, absorb the situation. But then, what's your action? What you do in order to change? What you do in order to, to become better? Because you don't want to be there in this position, sit on the bench. You want to be on the field, uh, perform and uh, play well. But what do you need to do? Are you doing the right thing? I provoked them because I was there. For me, it's easy, you know, but I manage the way I talk to them because for me, it's about not uh, confront them and to, to fight with them, but also to unlock the chain on their mind to make them see uh, things on a different way, not look on a, you know, just like, a, uh, for example, a horse. You have uh, something uh, uh, close to their... their the sides, but they, they see on the different ways, you know. Okay, I didn't play today, but next next game I want to play. But I need to do this thing. I need to train better. I need to uh, to do something different from what I have done now. And when I'm there on the field, you know, I'm sure I will do the right things in order to to be part of the the starting level. Right. So if you can go back in time, is there anything that you you do different? Honestly, I would have learned something different outside football. For example, after I start, I uh, finished my career. I have uh, done some course that really helped me in the process of the transition. I have done mental coach. I have done some other course that I found for me it was really important and. Um, I start to think, you know, with myself, why I have not uh, learned this kind of thing maybe 10, 15 years ago. I'm sure it would have helped me a lot and to become more conscious about what I need to do better. Uh, let's say create two different ways of doing things. Maybe the same thing, but on a better way. Because now, for example, when I... I speak to, to the players and ask them some questions. I, I help them to create two different scenarios in order to, for them to think what's the best way for them uh, to go somewhere they want but to achieve the best result with quality. This is what I, have, I wanted to learn when I was playing. You know? Because uh, when you learn this kind of tools, uh, you improve as a person as well. You improve as a human being. And being a better human being, you become a better professional, in my opinion. This is what I really want to learn in the past. Wow. Great. So what would you want your legacy to be? How would you see your legacy? I I start to see a lot of things of my kids. This is great because... Um, Sometimes they, <laughs> they make fun of me in my house because many, many ways, in many occasions, I'm very disciplined about doing things at home. 
But uh, it's funny the way they copy things, things I have done, things uh, I say to them, things that make some fun, and then they repeat the things I, I have done. This is great for me. This uh, really makes me happy. As a father, it seems like I, I'm the right way um, help my kids to, to improve their life, to, to try to, to find the best way to, to live uh, in order to, to be a good human being. As a professional, um, it's great when I, when I meet somebody else, somebody I never see in my life. Uh, I don't know if they, they were fun of me. Sometimes they come and say, I, I, I'm not, uh, a, uh, I never support any of your team, but I like you. <laughs> I, I like the way you always behave. You always talk, the way you, you work on the field, very professional, you always respect the game, you always, you always respect the opponents and they respect football. And this for me is, uh, is a gift. When somebody else I never see in my life come to me and say this, this is, a, is when, as a professional, you understand how important it is in every day's life you do things in the right way, on the field, outside the, outside the field. For a football player, you know, like me, with uh, almost 20 years of career, this is um, it's a great gift. It's a great gift. This is when I see, you know, the, the legacy, you know, moving forward. And uh, but um, despite the fact, you know, that is more than seven seven years I stopped playing football. People come to me, especially now with uh, social media, and say, "Oh, I still follow the work you do. You know, well done. Keep doing the same thing. Keep doing the, the job. You are doing great. This is amazing." Yeah, it is amazing. So um, tell me, who was your, your hardest challenges in football like when you was playing? Who would you say, was it Aroy and Keane? Who, who, who did you come up against that, you know, it was a tough battle? What player? Well, in England, it was really tough to play against uh, Paul Scholes. Uh, he was a tough player, very smart, very intelligent. Uh, we... We had to take care of him a lot, you know. My 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 case especially, you know, facing him in many occasions. And uh, but uh, in other hand, it was great to face to face him because when you face tough opponents, great players, intelligent players, is when you have to raise your game, raise your level. Is uh, you learn with them as well because uh, you have to find out how. I will face this guy, how I'll stop him. And you have to find a way. And then you prepare, you know, uh, even harder as you normally do. Because if not, the other guy <laughs> is going to kill you on the field. Yeah. He's going to do everything he wants to do uh, with you. And, um, but uh, it was great, you know, play against him, you know, some other players I, I face, like, Cristiano Ronaldo, Ronaldo it's himself, Ronaldinho, um, a few times, um, Pirlo, you know, Steven Gerrard, uh, even uh, Roy Keane, um, Frank Lampa. It was great, you know, great players I've played against, you know. It was amazing. I'm fortunate enough, you know, to have played against all these tough guys, <laughs> important play, uh, players of uh, football history. Yeah, and you didn't do too bad yourself. <laughs> um, you know the pressure, because world-class sports, I call it. I think people don't really understand. They see it on TV. They think this is PlayStation, not playing with your fingers. This is actually going out there and having that pressure on your shoulders. Did you feel the pressure of the money, you know, what it would cost a club or the rewards that you can get from winning a team? Or did you blacken that out? How did you go into a competition? Was it just about you? Or did you feel the pressures of the club and country? Well, first of all, you have to understand your rules. 
you have to understand your responsibilities. I think for me, this is the first point. You know, you have to understand your responsibility, why you are there for. Because if you don't understand this kind of simple things, but very important things, it's very hard to see the big picture. Uh, this is the way I see. Uh, understanding that and knowing your job, what you have to do, is about yourself to work hard in order to achieve the great result as a team. Because you don't, you don't achieve things alone by yourself. You might be the best player of the team, but you need others in order to, to get a good result. And um, when you are conscious about all these simple things, you know, uh, understand um, why you are there, why, for example, being at Arsenal, why Arsenal uh, brought me? I have to understand that because they trust me somehow. They, they believe that I was a good player. They trust me and they, they spend money, but I have to give something back to them. I have to give something back to the fans. I have to 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 do my my job properly because they there is a lot of expectation on me, and I don't want to frustrate people. Yeah. And understanding these things is about yourself to keep focus and do your job right and work hard in order to absorb the pressure because the pressure is there every time. Every time you you are on the field, um, you can play. Uh, you know the first game of the season or the last game that can uh, can be the game that make you the champion or not. But um, every time you have to give importance to every game, every circumstance, and absorb the pressure. But for me, the best way to absorb the pressure to understand this is working hard. It's working hard and prepare yourself well for the great great times. Yeah. And uh, great times for me was every game. Every every game for me was fantastic. It's the moment I always look for. That's why I work very hard uh, before this game, during the week, in the preseason, to be there. Because when I, I, I'm there, I forget everything outside me. Every the guy, I, I cannot listen to what people say on in stands but only think about what I need to do in order to beat my opponents and to win the games and to help my teammates. Wow, you really love football. I can tell it, the passion, the energy, going's going good, you love it. If the going's going bad, you still love it. So what was very interesting, because you took control of yourself, you took ownership. But what I'd like to know, when the team wasn't doing well and how did you uplift that player? Because obviously, like you said, it's a team. It's not just about Gilberto going out there yeah. and being a player. How did you handle it when, you know, that pressure was on your shoulders? It's the moment you have to, you know, have the feeling to, to, to understand the players you play with. Some of the players, they can handle the pressure. You don't need to say something to them because they, they know how to handle the pressure. Some, some players, you need to, to speak to them very calm. Some of the players, you need to shake them. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, wake up, you know. I need you back. I need you today. I need you now. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, you, you see, it's like an order, you know. Let me give you an example. Um, my last year playing football was a great experience. I, was, I wasn't expecting to be the last year, but unfortunately it was my last year back in 2013 play for Atlético Mineiro. Um, we will play the final of Copa Libertadores. It's equal to Champions League in Europe, here in South America. And uh, the first game we lost, and 2-0. Uh, we have to win the game 2-0 to go to penalties. And uh, I wasn't... I was on the bench this day, I didn't play, but I was there, you know, supporting the team and uh, I, I really want to play, of course, <laughs> but uh, I was not the choice for the, the manager that day, but I was there, you know, focusing the team, focusing every action on the field from the, from the bench and pay attention in every single moment. The team will play well. And uh, I, 
I felt that we were going to score, but we finished uh, uh, the first half new new. But we did a great job. The team played very well. In the half time, you know, after the the manager's conversation, you know, he spoke to the team, and then the guys start to prepare again to coming back to uh, to the pitch. I called them to the warm up, you know, and uh, told them, uh, you know, to come close because I want to say some words to them. And I told them, listen, this is your last opportunity. Maybe it's going to be your last opportunity to be in a, in a final of this import, important competition. Yeah. And um, don't, don't miss the chance. Don't lose the, this opportunity. And uh, do everything you can because you are to, in order to win this game. You are playing well. You guys are doing a great job. You know, uh, don't have doubts about it. About it. Go there. Because you are going to score the first goal, you are going to score the second, maybe the third, and um, do it for your families, because they support you in every day of this competition, suffering, you know, um, expecting you, uh, helping you uh, dealing with the frustration. Do it for the fans here in the stadium. You know, a lot of people here, you know, uh, trust on on us, and uh, many others around the world, you know, believe that we can do it. And if you can share with a little bit with me, because this is going to be my last opportunity. And I don't want to miss that. We are not going to miss this chance. <laughs> Let's go there and uh, do the job. And um, somehow, you know, we scored two goals in this game and uh, won the competition penalty. I don't know, this was like... Um, this was exactly what made the difference. I don't know, I cannot say that. But uh, I, in that moment, I believe that I had to say some things. Despite the fact I was not playing the game, I was on the bench. But um, it's about, come on, go there, you can do it. You know, this was, I, I translate to them on, on a different words. Wow, powerful, very powerful. So, Gilberto, I want to go into a different side because obviously when you're a player, you play for a club, you have an agent. How did you handle it as a player? Because an agent wants to make money off you, a club wants to make money off you and your performance. So how do players really handle that? Even though you love football, did you feel like an object? Did you feel like you're being used? What was it? Because how do you really find, you know, real people that you know is for you the, the best of Gibraltar rather than we want to make money out of Gibraltar. It's very strange when you start to think you are a product, a sports product somehow, you know, in the sense that um, because of your talent, because you play football, you are there uh, providing entertainment for people. I say, how can I be a product? I'm a human, you know, I'm a, I'm a person. But uh, later on, you start to realize you are a product, product, product of entertainment. But you can be uh, the best product you can, the best product in the market. I want to be the best product in the market. I want to, everyone wants me to be part of the, the crew, to be part of that team. It's like, uh, for example, you go to the shop, if you have money to afford to buy a great uh, handbag or the best uh, clothes in the market, in, in the shop. If you have the money to afford, you can buy that. I want to be the, the best product in the sense of the quality, the sense of what I do, make people believe that I can be part of that team. But it's hard. It's, it's hard to understand that, you know, to absorb this situation. But, uh, okay, if, I, if somebody, if in one side there is an agent, who somehow uh, helped me to dealing with the contract. Let's make things clear. Let's be um, uh, transparent to, to each one. You do your job, you make your money. You know, you uh, simple as that. But let's be transparent. Let's let's speak about things. Don't make things, don't make uh, me feel stupid if you do things wrong. Because if you do things wrong, I'll find out. But um. It's the way it is, Dalton. You have to understand you are part of the industry of football. You have to, to be professional. Do what you have to do. Uh, as long as you feel happy 
with things. But uh, the transparency in every business is very important. The honesty of doing things in the right way is always, for me, what really matters. Oh, brilliant. And that's what I like. Transparency, being honest, that's the only way to the top. Well, I'd like you to give me like three short questions at different stages in football, the up and coming player, grassroots. Give me an insight. What would you give to an up and coming footballer who's in grassroots footballer that can help them, that can give them a chance to develop? Hard work, courage, and um, never give up. Never, never give up. up. Number two question is someone who's, let's say, 19 and they're breaking out that development into men football. Someone who's getting paid very well to do a great job and someone who's inspiring to achieve that. What would they have to do to jump on to the next level? It's important to listen to the right people, to be surrounded by the right people and in order to not get lost because you may, may be talented, but if you are surrounded by the, the wrong guys, the wrong people, you may get lost. I think this for me is very important in every sense of life. Great. Number three is you had a great career and a very long career for a footballer. So anyone in the game, what insight would you give them, professional players now, that they can benefit and take an insight from you, how you, you know, kept motivated for so long? I believe it's important for them to work with their mental strengths because um, they work very hard uh, on the physical training, in the skills, in you know, the technical parts in the club, but um, not many clubs work with their mental strengths. You know, it's important. If they, they keep their mind strong, I'm sure they can control their body well, they can control their actions well, they can manage themselves in order to be a better professional, a better human being, and um, don't lose their focus because through stress in sports, you can become um, depressed. And uh, we have seen a lot of problems for sports people, you know, even though uh, they have, they had a great career, but um, somehow the they, they stress put them in depression. It's important to take care about their mental health. I mean, well said. Um, for me, um, it's always about keeping myself busy, pushing myself. When you know so much and you've been in great battles as a world-class high jumper myself, I've always liked to give back and I get inspired by seeing the next level of athletes, meaning footballer, rugby players, the players that I train to improve. And that's what's very rewarding for me. Mm -hmm. So on that note, the Dalton Girl Academy is going into universities in Africa to develop their sporting pro program to bring elitism. And speaking to you and the insight of what you've got, I think that we should have a collaboration. We should come together and work as world-class athletes and, you know, making a difference and touching people's life. How do you see yourself working with me? Well, um, I see very positive because uh, from the first day we've met, you know, it's like, uh, it's a good chemistry. Uh, the way we think, the way we manage uh, things around, around while us, the way we, we want to make impact on people's life, to help them growing up to uh, to develop themselves to in their career in their life in different sense not not only not about take advantage of people it's about to help them because we come from you know a tough background so we have to uh to grow up in sports sometime you know not many people to help us but uh, give something back back to those people you know to the society is something great for me I would feel very, very proud. Uh, it would be great if we we're having this opportunity to, to do some work together. And uh, why not? Right, why not? So you heard it here live on the Dalton Grant Academy show. I will be working, as you hear, with Gilberto Silva to touch lives and giving people the chance to achieve.
hard work, dedication, sacrifice. That's the ingredients that you need and experience. So when it comes to football, no one better in the game than the legend, Gilberto, yes, Gilberto Silva. On yeah. that note, I would like to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for taking your time out and um, giving a great interview and a great feedback insight to your life in football. Thank you. It's a pleasure, my friend. It's a pleasure speaking to you. And I hope that uh, we can inspire people. Take care. And I'm sending all my love to you and the family. Thank you. You too. Today's show is sponsored by Argon Utility Solution, your independent gas main service and meter installation specialist. To find out more about them, please click their link in the description below.